All right. All right, friends. There. So welcome, one and all, um, to the last and final um, webinar for our Green Heart Community Design Challenge. Doesn't mean there won't be other opportunities to engage, um, but this is the, the final one and probably the one I'm most excited about, uh, just because art, while this is an art project, specifically naming, bringing art into our designs in our communities. So this one is, is, is uh, for, for all of us here, I think, in our hearts as well, because all of us are, are artists ourselves. So a little bit about us really quickly. Uh, my name is Kevin Anderson. I work for Daily Acts, our climate youth leadership program. I've been working since 2006 on service learning projects um, with high school students in the realm of, of climate. I'm very excited. I'll pass it over to my manager, Nicole. Thank you, Kevin. Hi, everyone. My name is Nicole Warwick, and I'm really fortunate to be able to, to work with Kevin in our Youth Climate Leadership Program. And I am one of the co-directors of the Leadership Institute and do environmental health here at Daily Acts. Um, Daily Acts is this extraordinary, powerful, yet small grassroots nonprofit. And at the heart of what we do is inspire people to reclaim the power of their everyday actions to help collectively create a regenerative, resilient, and more just world. We teach things like sustainability and how to reconnect with nature through um, plants and water and being in the landscape. We host action campaigns and, and do a lot of building of networks and coalitions. Um, and then through this program, teach leadership skills to be able to empower the next generation of leaders in our community. And um, I'm really heartened to be here with you today. Art is a, a central component in my life and has been the thing that I think has saved my life most of all the things that I've been able to experience. And so I'm grateful to be able to share this space with you today to deepen in understanding art and the role that art has in our leadership. And so um, one of the leadership skills that we teach and practice in all of our meetings and everything we do and I bring this practice into my own art practice is to breathe, to just slow down and take a moment to breathe and meditate together. And so Kevin, would you mind leading us in an activity? I sure can. So wherever we are in our various places here, sheltering in place, um, let's go ahead and find a comfortable place to either sit. You can also stand if that's better for you, um, but somewhere where you can be still for the next couple minutes. Um, grab my clock because I want to make sure we stay on time here, but I definitely, um, we're going to breathe for two minutes together. So go ahead and you can either let your eyes close. You can also let your gaze soften and head towards the floor, um, whatever's most comfortable for you and start breathing in through, through your nose and out through your mouth. And as you're continuously breathing in through, our, in through your nose and out through your mouth, just recognize your, your mind might wander. It's totally normal. It's working. That's a good thing. Uh, but just gently with no guilt attached, uh, bring your awareness back to your breath. Feel the sensation of air coming in through your nose, to your nostrils, and then out through your mouth. And wherever your mind goes, should it be something that you haven't done, still need to do, something to do with school, even maybe the climate or the environment, or a younger sibling or an older sibling, don't worry about it, but just give yourself permission to bring your awareness right back to that breath. Once again, feel the sensation of that connection that connects all of us here in this space, throughout the entire planet, connecting us to all flora and fauna of the world, that symbiotic relationship of breathing in and breathing out. Gently keep bringing your awareness back to your breath.
Also recognize this is always available to us. It can take us right out of the fight or flight and into the present moment. All right, slowly bring your awareness with this last breath we're doing together here. And you can wiggle your toes and fingers. And thank you very much, friends. Oh, thanks, gonna, Kevin. Yeah. I'm going to go through this, uh, these next slides pretty quickly because I think by this point, all of us have had an introduction to the challenge. But definitely wanted to just point out um, our main intentions because that's very important. Uh, it's a frame, the Screenheart Community Design Challenge is co created with our youth board. It's a framework and pathway for youth to respond to our current climate, environmental, and social crises, an examination of our relationship to power and a way to artistically express ourselves, most importantly. So using art, which this is absolutely an art project to reimagine our communities, and then using that vision um, to engage our communities around shared values and climate safe design tools. And of course, um, ultimately what we're hoping for are policy changes. So our visions based on hope, um, to you know, bring in people in positions of power um, to, to bring in new policies that reflect those core values and hope being at the forefront there. So why now? Why is this something that we're doing now? Uh, well, and Tara, Tara will be able to tell you a little bit later. We're going to let her introduce herself in a second. But the city of Santa Rosa and Petaluma, along with a few others, um, are actively seeking community engagement in how the cities are planned. And this is for the next few decades in the general plan, um, but there are also opportunities to take immediate action as well. So it's quite the opportunity right now. The general plans will be closing next fall. So um, fall of 2022. Um, and so we want you to be, to have a voice now. Uh, 30 years goes quickly. Ask any of us adults in the room, or older adults, I should say, in the room. Um, it goes very fast. And so getting a youth vision now uh, is very paramount. And then once again, policies are how we move things at speed and scale. So that's why we want to incorporate the youth voice into policy. So real quickly at the bottom here, uh, it's the process we go by. We've already done part of that today with the notice and reflect and the breathing, always bringing it back to ourselves. That's where it starts, power of our daily actions, um, but also recognizing and see the system that there, there are inherent power structures we were born into. And it's very important to be able to recognize those in order to change them. Um, also, as we move through, it's, it's not a linear process, but we can visit every stage as many times as needed. And then the fruits of our labor are at the very top. And those are all climate safe, environmentally safe, and then socially cohesive or connective um, design tools. This, to be sure, this is uh, definitely biased. We're hoping for a future that is um, one that we all wanna be a part of. So the design tools, we've actually gone over pretty much all of these by now, but the most exciting part, watch this, is that art is in all of them. So it's quite an opportunity today. We're gonna to get to see some examples in each of these buckets. Um, also hear um, from a guest speaker about some opportunities coming up down the pipeline in Santa Rosa and hopefully other places in Sonoma County. So art is a huge part of all of these. Quick overview for today. Um, we're gonna to talk about, and ask you guys all questions about why art? Why is it so important? Why are we choosing to, to make this you know, an art project and incorporating art into everything we do? Um, where we're at here, uh, so how art shows up locally in Santa Rosa, Petaluma, and throughout Sonoma County, uh, where we can go. We're going to hear from the city of Santa Rosa's Tara Thompson. Uh, very, very exciting opportunities down the pipeline there. And then most importantly, a creative exercise where we're all going to get to actually um, use art in, in our designs and our communities, get to get some examples of creative juices going, and hopefully leave today with some, some tangible examples and places you can go. So I thought we'd do, because it's pretty intimate, we have enough, um, a few, few enough people here where I think everybody gets a chance now. Um, and this will be a great opportunity to, for, for Tara to introduce uh, herself and uh, Nicole as well um, a little more, but I wanna hear from all of you. So if you were an artist, tool or medium, what would you be and why? And I gave a few examples. These are by no means um, the full representation. Art can be lots of different things. It can also be dance and music. It can be many different things. I just wanted to give you a couple, couple of examples. It's the hardest thing in the world for me to not be able to see your faces when I'm sharing a screen, um, but I will do this. I'm going to mute and 
I will, let's see, to get things going, I'm going to just call on someone. And then if you can also call on the next person yourself, that would be very helpful. So Sophia, you're on the right for me. Why don't you go ahead and start with this question? If you were an artist, tool, or medium, what would you be and why? Um, I was going to say like a digital stylist, since that's what I tend to use the most. And also because it has like the versatility of you could, it could be any color I want. And I have a lot of different interests and hobbies. Um, Emily, how about you go next? Um, if I were an artist tool, I'd probably be an eraser because I tend to use them a lot. Um, Francisco can go next. Sorry. If I was an artist tool, I would be a paintbrush because I like to create stuff. And I choose John. If I were an artist's tool, I would... I would be um, probably a canvas. Uh, Edwin. If I were an artist, uh, medium or tool, I'd probably be uh, clay because you can mold it in different ways, and I feel like I can. I'm somehow represented by it. A nod. Is that? I think we still need to hear from NIE. Tara, Nicole. So, NIE, do you want to go next? I mean, if I was an artist too, I'd probably be ink because um, you can do many things with ink. Um, Nicole. Thank you. If I were an artist tool, I would be glue. I feel like I get to hold a lot together. Um, Tara. Uh, let's see, that's a great question. I think I, I think I'd like to be a palette where you mix all the colors together because I feel like uh, I'm good at combining different ingredients um, a way that a cook might with paint and with uh, the community and artwork that I do. And so that, that's what I would choose. I guess, Kevin, you're, you're last. It's your turn. <laughs> I would have to say a canvas uh, and a blank canvas specifically because I, I try in every interaction I have um, with human beings myself, it's a little harder to start with a blank canvas, um, which, is, which is easier said than done. Uh, but definitely that would be something I, I, would, I would say for myself. Um, did anybody else uh, want to add anything uh, after having heard everyone else want to add anything uh, in, into your, your tool arsenal? All right, <laughs> thank you guys for, for going through that. It's fun, I always like those, those questions. Mm -hmm. So why art? Um, this is one of those things when I, we initially, Nicole and I were talking about um, doing, doing this presentation. We were I was looking at you know, what art means to me, but the, thing, the beautiful thing about art is that it, it can mean so many different things to so many, you know, to everyone. And so rather than us presenting on what we think art is, um, we, we thought, you know, but this is a perfect opportunity to start building a conception, uh, starting with a blank canvas and start, start, start our painting our work of art right here. Um, so I wanted to ask the group right now, we can build this together. We're going to be taking notes and we can visit those at the end. Um, but what are the benefits of using art in public projects? And additionally, there's a bunch of other questions here too. Um, so what does art, rep what does art represent? How does art represent unique perspectives? How does art unite us? How does art help us to speak out against injustice? What is, how does creating art help you personally? What does it feel like to create something? So a few questions there to kind of get us going. Um, I'll jump back to the other one. Let's start here though. What are the benefits of using art in public projects? I wanna open it up to the group. 
um, with these questions. And we can go popcorn style. So once again, what are the benefits of using art in public projects? And once again, no right or wrong. Let's uh, hear what the group has to say. Uh, Sophia, you wanna you wanna uh, take a take a stab at that first one. Um, it probably could just bring happiness to people's day. Just like having a smile could make someone's day seeing something pretty. Absolutely, Sophia. Do you wanna do you wanna pick somebody out for that for to add on to that? So happiness for one. Edwin. I feel like the benefit of, oh, uh, I feel like the benefit of art in a public space might be, um, what was I going to say? It, it catches people's attention and it draws people in, I guess you'd say, and it makes people think as well. You can just stare at a piece and try and interpret it for minutes or hours on end. Uh, beautiful. Thanks for sharing that. Do you want to do you want to call on someone, please? Sure, John. One of the benefits is you can express yourself, and by expressing yourself, that creates curiosity towards other people. Uh, Francisco. Uh, what, uh, in my opinion, the benefits of using art in public projects is that it brings originality and creativity to the surrounding area, and it brings like more uh, security to people every, when it, when there's art there. And I say any. Um, the benefit that I think of um, comes with art in public projects is it creates a safe place for people to go to. Um, Tara. Thanks. I'm going to talk a little bit about this. I have some slides to share with you in a few minutes. Um, but one of the things that I think it does, especially when you do a art project in a public project with the surrounding community is it gives that community ownership over that art and ownership over that public space in a way that makes people feel more comfortable there, invited there, and welcomed there. Absolutely beautiful. And let's uh, let's let's go a little deeper. Um, so there's a lot of questions here. You don't have to tackle all of those, um, but let's maybe start with the personal because um, we we've, we've talked about in public spaces. I really appreciate that framing there with Tara at the end of uh, just a, a welcoming space. Um, you know, in, in invitation, but how about personally? What does it feel like when you create art? Um, what does that feel like inside of you? Uh, how, how does that feel uh, for, your, for you personally, creating something original? Um, and let's see, how about you wanna start, John? Uh, when I create something with art, I get a sense of um, like, I get proud of my work. Uh, Francisco? Uh, when I create art, I feel like a, a sensation of happiness because I finally created something with my own hands. And I feel like proudness because it took so long to create this art, but it's finally created. And I feel relief for being done. Uh, I choose Edwin. Uh, the way I feel is I feel a sense of accomplishment and pride, but I also also a sense of joy because I enjoy looking at art and things that I've done. Um, Sophia. Um, for me, creating art is kind of meditative. It's like I could just relax and just focus on the art, not to worry about everything else going on. Um, who hasn't gone yet? yet? Um, I think Emily is having Wi-Fi problems, but NIE, definitely, I'd love to hear from you. Uh, 
Uh, wait, did you call on me? I don't know if you guys can hear me or not. <laughs> Oh, Emily, yeah, perfect, you're still here. Um, yeah, please, go ahead and then we'll pass it over to NIE after you. Emily, absolutely, I'm glad you're still here. Okay, okay. Um, when I create art, I feel a sense of relief because it's my way of expressing my feelings. So it's pretty nice. And NIE, you can go. Um, when I do art, I kind of get a bit frustrated because I'm not a big, on, a big of an artist. And sometimes I don't like to the way I'm going with it. But then at the end of it, I feel relieved and proud of myself because I got to turn something that was not going as well into something beautiful. Tara, how about you? How do you feel when you create art? Well, I think I share everyone's, um, what, they've sh what they've shared. I share uh, your, your feelings um, a lot of the time. I think the only thing that maybe I would add is sometimes I just generally give over to the being in the moment uh, feeling of creation. So it's kind of like being at peace um, and not having any other thoughts except uh, the work that I'm creating. So I guess being in the moment is the sensation. And Nicole's doing a great job. I can see in the background taking notes, but Nicole, how about you? What does it feel like when you create something original? Yeah, I really, I want to echo what Tara said, actually what everyone said, because I can, I relate to everything that you shared. I feel those things too. Um, but it is for me, this process of being able to surrender and get out of my mind and thinking and just being and playing with color and shape and form. I feel, I feel playful again. I feel like I get to be in a flow, that flow state. Um, feels really nice. And, and I resonate with what Tara said about feeling that like being at peace. Yeah, thanks. How about you, Kevin? Yeah, I, I totally agree. I think it's one of those things that I'm in my head so much. Um, I also deal with ADD. And so the times I just remember in high school, I, I really was struggling a lot. And I was able, my neighbor was a ceramics teacher at our school. And she said, why don't you come try it? She was a very different cultural creative and a little bit of a different woman, but I was like, oh, I'm going to try this. I've never done this before. And I, I just remember for maybe the first time in my life, consciously realizing um, the power of art because we had 90 minute, a 90 minute block schedule and 90 minutes always felt like two minutes to me. Um, and I didn't have to talk. I, I could even cry into my work. Uh, so it, it changed my life in a way that I, I never thought possible. So in many ways, art Art is just what everyone has said is that sense of accomplishment and pride and then just ability to let go of all of those issues, which there are so many right now. <laughs> all right, so we'll keep flying through these, um, but I, I definitely, I, it's really important. I mean, we've been doing a great job so far of, of really getting in there, um, talking about how it can change uh, space, but I wanted to do just a couple of um, public art exhibits that have happened um, these are not local to Sonoma County. We'll get there in a minute, but just you can take a look at this before and after here um, and also a typical uh, crossing without paint. Most of them don't have it. Um, and then also in, in Tara, we'll talk about this a little later. Art doesn't have to necessarily just be uh, a mural type of thing. It also can be reclaiming space and moving. So I wanted to include that, that bottom photo as this is in Los Angeles for sure. And it's there doing complete streets there and also slow streets and really reclaiming space for pedestrians in certain places. Um, and so I just wanted to ask, you know, a couple more questions here. Um, how, how does it change spaces? How can we use art to bring awareness to our climate environment as well? Because that's one of the reasons why we're here. So I'd love to hear uh, what the group has to say. And Raja, welcome. We'll get to you in just a second, brother. I'm glad you're here. Uh, so Sophia, why don't you start us off here? How can we use art to bring awareness to our climate and environment and change some spaces? Um, I think you said something about uh, previously that it can encourage uh, traffic to slow down so there's less accidents and there's also, um, it can encourage people to walk or ride their bike more. And if things are um, like have art on them, they're more likely to attract someone's attention. So it could bring attention to different things we need to address. 
And then go ahead, Sophia, and call um, somebody else. Thanks for sharing. Oh, uh, Raja. Uh, yeah, so art is really tied with emotion, the color. So I feel like the right signs with the right writing and the right color can really tie in someone's emotion. It can captivate you even. Um, because kind of color is tied with emotion, you know, red, it can be tied with anger, or it could be tied with light. Yellow is more of a joyful color. Green is a mellow color. So like the right colors really integrated into it can really captivate someone. Um, and I'll pass it on to, I don't know who else is gone. Um, so I'll go Edwin. Uh so the, the way I see it is um, the art really brightens the area. As you can see in like the first uh, set of photos, the first one is, to me, it appears more gloomy. There's, and then in the second one, once, out, once color is added, it really brightens the area. And I feel like you could attract more people. And uh, as Sophia said, potentially slow traffic. I'll pass it on to Francisco. Uh, I think how art can bring awareness to our climate and environment is by uh, like cap by catching the attention of the people when they're driving down or walking by seeing uh, these colorful images of the environment and how we are destroying it, which will make them think of how can we save it. And that's how I think it will bring awareness by making them think about what's happening in their world and i call and i choose uh john uh, i agree with what everyone said so far how um art really brings in people because like as well like in the first picture um that just looks like a boring neighborhood that no one would want to visit but then on this after picture that's like um, somewhere that everyone would like to like, at least once in their life, um, go look. And then as for like, if there's like um, a mural like by a playground um, that like say the kids from the community created, that's like something that will bring them more, um, more attention to the playground. I pass it on to Anai. Um. Based on what John said, I agree with them, not only because um, it brings attention, but as he said, in the first neighborhood, as we can see, um, many parents won't trust their kids to go out or play with the other neighborhood kids. But as we can see in the other picture that has more color, I feel like parents also feel more, will feel more safe letting their kids go out and being around the streets. Um, Emily? I think Emily might have dropped off. Um, she was saying she has some uh, some Wi-Fi issues. So I think we'll fly through a, a couple more of these. I definitely want to leave plenty of time for Tara, but I, I really thank you guys for, for really laying down and uh, painting this uh, amazing, um, really some amazing thoughts and weaving together uh, the power of art. Um, wanted to just show a few here. That one in the center there is um, Santa Rosa Creek. Um, and so how and where they're showing up at Sonoma County, this would be a nice bridge to, to Tara here. We'll just fly through a couple of these, but um, Art Start was, was gonna be here. They're an organization based out of Santa Rosa, but do, do work all over Sonoma County. And so these are a few, I promised them I would show a few really cool ones they're doing just to bring awareness to the environment. Um, you guys already summed it up so well in, in, in our sh sharing session. Um, but these are all in Sonoma County, which is just really cool. Makes me wanna look at all of them. I've seen a handful and maybe you guys have too. But just it's really, really special. Um, this this actually we just moved from Katati to Santa Rosa, but this was in Katati, and this was my uh, our four year old's favorite place in Katati, um, which is actually funny because it's a really busy, really busy section where one sixteen meets um, commerce. But it just this mosaic really was striking, and and I understand it. And then of course the fish right by the Santa Rosa Creek. Um, this is the cyclist one, which is on Santa Rosa Avenue, made of old bike parts, which is pretty neat. And then I believe this is Spring Lake area, another mosaic there, which is just so cool. A um, couple more we just had to show. Um, this is Rima here, the, the local artist from Montgomery High School. For those of you that have seen some of her work, this is by no means 
the only one she's done, but this one is called The Dreamer, uh, bringing uh, voice of immigrants throughout Sonoma County and, and the United States, the world. Really, really beautiful piece, striking. And then this is Max Bala, a local artist that has done many different uh, works in Sonoma County, but mainly based out of Petaluma. That's at Casa Grande High School there. So I just wanted to, to show you that's right in front of their main quad and also their two acre garden in the middle of campus. Um, this is, you guys probably all know this one already. Uh, this is in the heart of Roseland, um, where some of you here today are hoping to reimagine doing some more art projects, uh, getting some community microgrids, uh, some tactical urbanism going, some creative transit stops. This was a few years ago, but adding some color to a sports court and benches, of course, really, really exciting. And there's Max again here in Petaluma, the city of Santa Rosa. So um, I am really, really excited. I'm gonna stop sharing here. And uh, Tara Thompson is it's with the city of Santa Rosa. And I, I could honestly, I, I, we haven't known each other very long, but after hearing her talk for two minutes, she wanted, she wanted to make me start a revolution and how exciting and, and some of these opportunities that Santa Rosa has down the pipeline. Really, really honored to be able to introduce Tara Thompson. Um, and she's gonna get to tell you about all of it right now. Oh, thank you so much, Kevin. Well, it's super inspiring to be a part of um, this presentation today. And, uh, and thank you all for doing the work you're doing, considering um, art in city planning and in your neighborhoods and in environmental change and environmental justice. So it's all interconnected. And um, the piece of it that I work on is through the City of Santa Rosa's public art program. So I'll go ahead and share my screen and then I'll go through my presentation. Um, but I would love to invite uh, a dialogue. If you have a question while I'm talking, please just chime in um, and uh, we can be, uh, we can have a conversation about this if you're comfortable. Otherwise, um, I'll go through my presentation and we can, we can chat um, after. Let's see if I can get that to work. Okay, is that full screen for you guys? Sure is. Okay, great. So um, I have had the pleasure of working for the city of San Rosa for the last 14 years. And um, I am an artist myself. I studied painting and printmaking and have a master's in fine art. Um, I attended a Waldorf school for my early education, which gave me a really strong connection to the place and the earth and nature, um, which I find interesting that kind of doing art in public places and art have like intersected in the way that they have in my career. Um, so I am showing a picture here on this slide of a piece that's over the Santa Rosa Creek, very close to the fish sculpture that Kevin showed by a Sonoma County artist, Michael Hayden. It's made out of LED light strips. So if you're downtown in the evening, it turns on right around the same time that street lights turn on at dusk and it has a cool program that it cycles through that you can take a look. So uh, I thought I would just start with maybe some of the boring part, but I think it's exciting for the city of San Rosa to be in the place that we're in right now in terms of where the public art program is headed. Um, the public art program is small. I'm the only full-time staff. I have um, some project managers that are contractors and, and a few temp staff that help with certain types of projects. But really, uh, it, it's me and I'm in the economic development department. So I work really closely with our economic development team, which really um, does outreach in the community in very similar ways that a public art program does, um, essentially to, to make sure that our, our community is, is um, economically viable, that, that, we can, that people can live here, that there's housing for people, that there's um, shopping, there's the right kind of shops in the right kind of, in, in neighborhoods accessible to all people, that there's equitable access to um, economic opportunity. So we're really, uh, it's really a good fit to have public art in there because there's so many ways that you can accomplish those types of goals through public art as well, and not just maybe through other means. So the public art program just went through a strategic planning process, which means we brought in a consultant. We did a lot of meetings with our public art committee, with the community, um, and came up with theory of change, which really talks about where we want our organization to go, what, what, what um, kind of impacts we want to see if we do the right things. And so um, I think the key things here is that really we want to be able to see an empowered, thriving, and inclusive Santa Rosa community connected through the power of art. 
And so our piece of, of accomplishing that is kind of laid out here, um, starting with that we want to champion artistic expression and amplify community voices through a diverse array of public art experiences. And I should say that public art can mean a lot of things to different people, but the way that we define it here for our program is very expansively. So it's really art in any media that was meant for the public, for the benefit of the public. So it can be place making, place meaning, um, community building, any, me any medium, any discipline, um, practice background or vision. So we want to get the message out to the community, especially um, the youth in our community about what we're doing and how they can be involved. So a little bit later on, there'll be a few opportunities um, to share with you about that. So these are some of the projects we have been working on over the last few years, it's really starting with the response uh, from the Tubbs fire. So after that, um, disaster in 2017, we really shifted a lot of our art projects towards recovery and resiliency and bringing artists in to be a part of that process. So we did a, a few rounds of temporary art project opportunities where artists could apply for small grants to do temporary projects that um, talked about the place that fire had happened, the people that it had touched, um, the impacts to our community, uh, and, and many other themes. But you can see a couple examples here. There was a photography exhibit in Courthouse Square. There was a, um, it's still there actually, a uh, project up at Rinkin Ridge Park where an artist built a flower bed, an actual bed with a flower bed in it, and then he made handmade paper with a variety of wildflower seeds in, in the paper. Uh, put the paper over the bed like a quilt, then it rained. And over the last now two seasons, we've had wildflowers come up um, in the flower bed. So you can see that picture there on the top right. Uh, we also organized a open call for any Santa Rosa uh, resident. Actually, it was Sonoma, I think it was open Sonoma County, any Sonoma County resident to submit one piece of art to be a part of a fire reflection show. So talking about your, you know, art is, obviously a wonderful way to express how you're feeling, your, your trauma, your memories, your experiences. And so having um, an open call for artists of all ages, any skill level um, to submit a piece and be a part of a show uh, was pretty powerful. And it was also in conjunction with the film the city made called Last October, which recounted the city's experience of the Tubbs fire. Um, and then in Coffee Park, which I'm sure, as, as you know, um, was, was really devastated by the fire, the park in that neighborhood called Coffee Neighborhood Park was pretty, pretty well destroyed. And so part of the rebuilding process for that park included bringing artists in um, to work with the neighbors on designing a piece of art for the park. So the piece that you can see here, there are three raindrop seating elements, the two smaller ones spin around so kids or adults can sit in them or be spun around in them. Um, it has a center, center area that's a mosaic. Um, there's also glow in the dark aggregates sprinkled around in the cement pad. So in the evening, you can kind of see a little glow. And those artists, they're local, they're from Sonoma County. They did an amazing, um, an amazing outreach effort with the Coffee Park neighborhood with the school kids from Schaefer Elementary School to really ask what kind of art should go in the park. And they really worked with the neighborhood to design that piece. So you can see the piece there and then you can see one of the artists talking at the school. Um, we've also done a lot of um, response and recovery related to the pandemic as well. So uh, one of the programs we launched um, early early into the pandemic, so maybe May of last year, was a website called insideoutthere.com. And that's in conjunction with our Out There Santa Rosa website, uh, which is our um, economic development and kind of placemaking program. And, uh, and so Inside Out There is really taking what culturally is cool about Santa Rosa, the artists, the music, um, the cool, places you can visit, the restaurants, um, the shops, and putting them all 
on a website where people can still get connected to the things they want to see or the shops they want to visit or the food they want to buy or the artists they want to look at their art. So um, we created a public art section of that website that really highlighted all of uh, the local artists and also has hosted some rotating shows like our National Arts Program exhibit. Uh, the other really big program we focused on last summer was called Open and Out, and it was um, a great partnership with a lot of folks to essentially close down three blocks of 4th Street and make it a pedestrian only zone with a lot of outdoor retail and dining spaces, but we just filled it with public art. So we had, I think, um, I think about $100,000 worth of public art commissioned for that project. Um, most of it temporary, some of it ended up being permanent, but most of it was temporary, some of it's gone now, some of it's still up. The last project that's going in actually is going in this Saturday, it's called Poetries, and it's a poetry, interactive poetry exhibit in Courthouse Square on the trees. Um, so I encourage you to all come check that out. Um, but you can see some, some of the examples here of some of the public art that was commissioned um, for the Open and Out project. And really, you know, some of the most exciting things I felt with this project was, um, was first of all, being able to pay an artist during a time of economic hardship to do a project. I mean, artists didn't have any way to make a living if that was their main source, if, if they were relying on activities that they couldn't do anymore because of COVID. So, um, so that, that was one great thing. Another thing was just seeing people use public space differently. And I think that that's one of the most pow powerful things public art can do is encourage different patterns of use, different interactions, different ways of viewing the space, using the space and interacting with each other in public space. And so seeing those things starting to happen was, was super exciting. Um, it was great, great to work with the businesses, the business community too. Yeah, downtown as well as with um, other partners that that helped with the project. Uh, the other piece that we started doing about the same time was thinking about, um, okay, well, we want to be responsive to the arts community during the pandemic. So what what can we do to help? So we ended up doing um, kind of like a needs assessment of the arts community that went into a crisis response plan that we then used for our um, strategic planning process as well. Um, so then because there was uh, also a lot of other uh, issues coming up at the same time, the public art program also wanted to be um, responsive and partner with uh, folks wanting to talk about social justice and um, racism and Black Lives Matter. And so uh, we worked with several activists to enable community expression in a way that um, was, let's just say, um, kind of sanctioned rather than being graffiti and painted over because that's what happens a lot of the time with um, unsanctioned public art in public spaces. So um, we, we specifically worked with groups that um, that wanted to do a piece on, this piece is on the street, on 4th Street, it's still there. It needs a little bit of touch up, but it was done by SCAPE, the Sonoma County Artist Promoting Equity. It also had a portrait um, component to it that, that you can see in the other photo that were installed on the um, parklet spaces. Um, so that, that was kind of like our, our last couple years, we've been focused on those types of projects. Um, before that, we really were focused on a more traditional public art program, meaning we would commission a permanent sculpture for somewhere in the downtown um, and then take care of it, make sure it didn't you know, fall apart. So, a, but, so, so conservation and maintenance is still a big part of a public art program, managing a public art program. We have over 200 items in our collection. We have a map um, that's on our website and you can check it out. You can go walk around downtown. It shows you where all of the public art is that's downtown. That's not the entirety of it, but a lot of it, about um, 65 pieces or so. Um, and, and so, you know, it's not like that part of our program goes away, but we're definitely more interested in the other elements of a public art program at this point than just building a collection that, that isn't our primary focus right now. 
Um, even though I just said that, some projects that are in the works right now include a big new piece for Courthouse Square. And um, ever since that square was uh, remodeled or reunified, there has been um, uh, a plan to put a new piece of public art at the north end of the square. So we went through an extensive selection process, um, a nationwide selection process, identified an artist named Blessing Hancock and her design is called Unum. And um, she is just about to start the community engagement phase to collect from the community ideas for words and phrases in all different languages that will be laser cut onto this piece. So that will be a um, great opportunity for everyone um, in this, in this, uh, on this call, but also in, in the greater community to participate and let us know what you think should be on the piece. We also have a call for artists open right now, or actually just closed on Monday for a new piece on a parking garage. So um, we, we have art, you probably have seen other public art in some of the other parking garages downtown. This project is for the Fifth Street parking garage, which doesn't have any art currently on this side of it. There is a mural on the other side of it that Art Start did, or actually, yeah, it was Art Start and Mario Uribe. Um, so this opportunity is really for anything painted or sculptural that could be installed on this corner to help identify this as a parking garage for people because it's often overlooked by people downtown. Um, another support program we have right now is a musician relief grant. So a lot of musicians cannot perform live, haven't been able to over the last year because of COVID. And so um, instead of, um, uh, instead of trying to commission a, you know, a performance or something like that, we decided to um, provide $2,000 grants or relief funding to musicians. So uh, we're hoping to have that first round completed and those grants out to people um, in June. And then we're hoping to do another round in July. Um, so that's, um, that's, been, that's been our focus um, just recently. The upcoming projects that I think are the most exciting, but I don't have any flashy photos for are some of the things that, um, that Kevin mentioned. Um, our general plan is going through a major update right now. It's a three-year process. So a general plan for a city, I don't know how much you've talked about this, is really you know, a, a guiding policy document um, for the city's um, future for the next 20 to 30 years usually. Um, and so I think ours will be to 2050, I believe is the plan, I think. Um, and so we're starting that process, it's a three-year process. There will be lots of opportunities for public engagement. But one thing the public art program is trying to do from kind of the inside out is get an artist to be a part of the planning team, a part of the planning process. Um, because artists who do that kind of work um, bring such a different perspective and can do a lot in the realm of engagement with the community, get people thinking differently um, than like maybe your, the normal city outreach process that we have. And so I, I'm, I'm working with our planners on getting an artist on board for that project. Um, not necessarily to make something physical, but to be a part of the process, be a facilitator in the planning process. A really exciting program we're gonna start um, building now and probably launch in another year or so is public space toolkits. So we're really trying to um, enable neighborhoods and communities to take back public space in a different way, kind of think of it as their space again and figure out how they would wanna use it to help their community, to help their neighborhood um, and so similar to how we changed the downtown by closing streets last year, we're hoping to put together these toolkits where neighborhoods um, can rent out, um, or I should say borrow, um, there wouldn't be a charge for it, but borrow barricades to close their streets if they wanna do like a slow street program or a play space um, area or an outdoor school space or uh, install public art in that space. Um, so using streets and sidewalks and other public spaces in a different way, also included in those toolkits would just be like how to do a mural in your neighborhood. What are the steps you would need to know? Who do you need to contact? What are the triggers at which you would need to talk to the city? What are the things you can just do without talking to us? We're really trying to enable people to do the types of projects they want to do in their neighborhoods so that they're not um, 
feeling like we're the thing stopping them. A lot of times government slows things down. And so we're trying to flip that over and be like, no, we're waiting for you to do, tell us what you want to do and here, we're going to help you do it. Um, some of the funding we have um, over the next three years will be going specifically to, um, oh, I should mention the public art audit first. So as I mentioned, we have a public art collection of you know, physical murals, sculptures, mosaics, things like that mainly downtown, but there's other art all throughout Santa Rosa that we haven't really ever cataloged or inventoried. We would like to do a complete inventory or audit of all the public art in Santa Rosa and be really inclusive about what we're counting as public art. So it could be an annual festival. It could be a, you know, a graffiti wall. It, you know, I, it could be, there could be lots of things that fall into that category, mainly with the focus or, or the intention of identifying where there isn't art, where are the art deserts in Santa Rosa so that we can make sure that we are commissioning projects for those areas and getting art infused into those neighborhoods. Um, the Art and Public Places Committee um, oversees the, the policy and the approvals for the public art program. So anytime a new project is being commissioned, a new artist is selected, they're the approving body. It doesn't go through our city council, it goes, goes through the Art and Public Places Committee. And they are talking about forming three different task forces to really start drilling down on some important issues, diversity, equity, inclusion, and access, engagement, and project development. So those are um, some focus areas that we should be seeing some, some good things come out of with that committee. Um, I think that's pretty much it. I would love to open it up to any kind of conversation you'd like to have or questions. And I'm always available to answer questions after this as well. My email and phone number are on, on this slide. Wow, Tara, I'm speechless right now. I'm gonna open it up to the to the, the youth in the call here. Um, we have quite an opportunity. You can see Tara's an artist uh, herself and also is pushing in a direction that we need to go. So now's your chance, uh, everyone. Any questions, comments, um, follow up you want for, for Tara, here, here's your chance, at least right now. <laughs> yes, Raja. Uh, have you ever done a survey of the public, do you know, get their, their opinion on what kind of art they want to do or what kind of art they want to see or? Yeah, it's a good question. We, we do. Um, we did one recently for our strategic planning process. So um, when, we, um, when we hired a, a firm to help us with that, they did some outreach. They did a survey that just kind of went out to the general public, but then they interviewed uh, about 25 kind of key people that kind of represented certain um, demographics and certain uh, sectors in Santa Rosa to try to get a little bit of a, a drill down in terms of what people think of a public art program. What do they think a public art program should do? What types of uh, art are most interesting to them? Um, and we kind of use some of that information to build on our strategy, uh, to build a strategy around that. Uh, really, a lot of it comes to we want to we want to do our own projects. Don't don't come into our neighborhood and put something there that you think we want. And so that's kind of why we're shifting uh, to this idea of the toolkits and and creating resources for. Um, for neighborhoods uh, or just districts, areas of Santa Rosa to do the projects that they want to do. That doesn't necessarily mean that we wouldn't still do, you know, commission a, a piece of art for that area as well. But I think that it, we, we want to set up a much different structure of talking about art, what art is, what public art is, what pu public art program can do that will enable a better conversation moving forward um, for how we can support so, you know, we, we often do surveys when to the general public or we, we ask for your opinion when we have like a finalist for a project. So like for Courthouse Square, there were five finalists. We asked the, the general community, which one's your favorite? Tell us um, why, how do you think it affects the space? And those results played into the selection process. Um, but I think broader than that, we're interested more in a conversation where we feel like we're providing resources and tools to enable people to do what they want. Uh, 
All right, any, anyone else? Great question, Raja. Uh, anyone else have uh, questions about what Tara just presented on? How it could maybe relate directly to your community, your neighborhood, the spaces that you that you call your own? All right, well, Tara's information is there. Um, wow, Tara, thank you so very much. That was uh, super inspiring and it's great to know, uh, just selfishly for myself, that the, our, the city I live in is headed this direction or is already there. Uh, so really, really, really exciting. Um, Nicole, I'm gonna turn it over to you and hopefully we can have uh, Tara stay. You're under no obligation too, but I think we're gonna do something creative right now. Great, thank you. Thanks, Kevin. Thank you so much, Tara. I'm so heartened to learn all of the great things that are happening in Santa Rosa. And I think I am curious to know, are there opportunities for our youth who want to maybe be on these commissions or committees or in the decision-making process of what art is happening, if, if that's a possibility? Yeah, that's a great question. Thank, I, thanks for bringing that up. I was going to mention that. Um, so the Public Art Committee, the Art and Public Places Committee is their name. They uh, you saw one of their task forces is gonna be engagement. They wanna get more people, including youth involved with the committee. And we're talking about having what, what kind of structure it would look like if we had um, kind of like a youth representative on that committee. Uh, there's some restraints with that given how the city does things, but we're looking at how we can do that. Even if we can't do that, we want to include people in those meetings in a more meaningful way. And so figuring out how, how we can invite, uh, send out the invitation, stand the invitation to be a part of those meetings. Um, but even beyond that, we are also going to be forming an advisory council that's a larger community group that will then advise the Art and Public Places Committee on certain um, in certain aspects. And so um, that is another opportunity as well. There, there will be a lots of opportunities and I'd love to share them as we develop them with you, um, with your organization, so you can get them out to the folks that you're working with. That would be great. Uh, thank you. Yes, I, I'm super excited about being able to collaborate with you and find pathways for the amazing young people that we work with to be able to share their ideas in that space. Uh, Raj, I see you raised your hand. Uh, yeah, um, Tara, I don't know how much say you have in it, um, but a youth representative, I can say personally, really helps, like in a commission or really anything. I am one of two youth representatives in the city of Penaluma's Climate Action Commission, and we bring kind of a new perspective to the field because, you know, we don't factor in as much money as the reason behind it. Um, and so I noticed it can be really helpful. Yeah, thank you. I appreciate that. I, I know it's come up in a lot of our meetings as, a, as an important um, an important strategy to pursue. So we're not gonna give up until we know that we, well, well, we're not gonna give up. We're gonna pursue some way of making sure it's make, it's gonna happen. <laughs> oh, that's such wonderful news. Thank you. What a great question or comment and reflection, Raja too. Thanks for sharing your expertise here. Um, all right, you guys. So this is where we get to get creative and kind of creatively digest everything that we've just spent the last hour learning and exploring. So if you haven't already, get something ready. I, I, I'm mindful that Sophia likes to use her digital stylus, so maybe crayons aren't your thing. That's okay. Some paper, some crayons, some, some digital art, something that you can be expressive and creative with. So I'll give you a second, get together what you might need. <sighs> And while people are getting prepared, those of you who are ready, let's just slow down for a minute. Plant both feet on the ground if you can. You might wanna roll your shoulders a little bit, move your body. There's so much more than heads in boxes on screens. Okay. Maybe let your body settle in and if you feel comfortable, you can close or just lower your vision. We're gonna take three very slow, deep breaths together. And as you and with this breath in, bring your awareness to the base of your spine. Feel it as you exhale. 
feeling the support of the earth underneath us all. So we're gonna do an imaginary process. Since you guys are so very imagining the communities that you wanna be a part of, we're gonna reimagine together. I'd like to invite you to consider your project that you're working on. Perhaps it's a project for the Green Heart Challenge, or perhaps it's another project you're working on through school or your community. As you're allowing yourself to reflect and remember your project, imagine your project being enhanced by color and shape and texture. Imagine the artistic elements that could be brought into your idea that will help it catch the attention of the community. Slow us down. Help us feel that we're part of a safe space. Something that's original. That expresses who you are. That expresses what your community is. And we're gonna take a couple of minutes of silence for you to just explore your imagination. As you continue imagining, tune in to how you feel being with this art. Now invite in others in your community or your family to join you in this space with this art, with your project. And imagine the response of your community. And tapping in, connecting to how it feels to bring your reimagined project, your creativity, your ingenuity. Tune into how it feels to know you're a part of making our world more beautiful. And when you're ready, and only when you're ready, I invite you to take five, five to seven minutes or so, and let's just draw. 
what did you imagine? What did you see? If drawing's not your thing and you just wanna write a list of those things or, or perhaps it, it flows like poetry, express yourself in whatever way it calls. And yeah, we'll take another, we'll take about five or seven minutes and we'll just get creative with it. <laughs> 